Hey guys, welcome back to another video on SQLize ORM with Node.js. Uh, I apologize for what's about to happen. I'm kind of going to jump forward on you here. I recorded an entire video about a half hour long and after watching it back I see that uh, the audio cut out halfway through and the screen, scro screen froze. So I'm really not prepared to redo all of that work but I will walk with you guys through what I had done. So first and foremost um, I wanted to go over what I was doing here. Remember a couple videos back I had stated that we would be separating out our logic so it flows like this. And I had said that we were going to get on with uh, user identification, but what we actually have to do first is have a user to identify. So we're going to kind of skip over this for the moment and head straight to some of this. Okay, so but we're going to create a few folders and directories to structure out our application. Identification, for lack of a better term, is simply middleware. It is something that all of our routes will run through before they hit our API gateways. So we had created a directory, and it's empty for right now, called middleware. And this is where I will put anything that basically has to handle overarching tasks. Um, if there's middleware that has to run crons, if there's middleware that has to handle authentication, if there's middleware that has to uh, handle sessions and stuff like that, then this is where it's going to be put. The next thing we have is the API gateways. So once things run through the API or through the middleware and everything, it should hit the API gateways. And I created a directory called API gateways. I'm very literal. You, um, it's not uncommon for you to see me write variables that are like, this variable is named this, or this variable does this, because I'd rather be really literal and, uh, read make things very readable and understandable then try and be smart about it and write really complicated crap so we have a directory called api gateways and inside of this directory i placed a file called user underscore gateway dot js okay and this is the user gateway dot js file as it stands right now at the top, I have a little comment saying what this file is. So it's the gateway for user routes. And then we in required in express and express router so that we could handle actual routing. Uh, and I'll talk about what these async handler and this validator is in just a second. And then finally, we are sorry, finally, um, we should have a uh, module that exports equals the router so that in app.js we underneath all of our other middleware right remember that the application gateway is hit after everything else has passed this is the last stop in the train station so underneath all of our other middleware we have our application gateways and I wrote app.use forward slash user because this is, the, this is the user gateway and then we're going to require in the API user gateway okay so this is kind of where I was saying that I do expect you to know JavaScript and Node.js because I expect you to know what this is doing and what this means I'm not going to explain that so now that any um, route that has this forward slash user is going to get forwarded to this user gateway. Okay. And finally, before I talk about this, looking back at our diagram, we have our services. So let's look at what we have here. We have a new directory now called services. 
And please feel free to pause and play this video as many times as you like to actually catch up with all this. This took me a good half hour to do and I'm running through it in a slow, uh, like it's been five minutes now and I've probably only spent a good two minutes actually talking. So stop and start. <laughs> I have a directory now called services and inside of services we have a users directory because we're going to have three services remember we're going to have a user service okay a content service and a course service so inside of our user service we have two files I have a file that is actually called user service and then I have a file that's called userdb.js. And this is going to be the uh, database handler. So the user service is responsible for manipulation, validation, and anything along those lines. Whereas the userdb handler is responsible for actually reaching into the user database and doing something. The user service should never, never directly touch the database. Ever. So then we wanted to create our very first route to handle user creation. So I created a post route. Okay, we created a post route that is just a forward slash, and this is going to be responsible for creating our users. I then used a bit of middleware uh, here. We're going to pass the function through this async handler. So let's look at what this async handler is. First, why? Well, the async handler is doing exactly what it's meant to do. I want a function that handles all of my asynchronous code. That way I can write if so needed, this. Okay, so now I can actually write async this. And what this is going to do, I'm not going to do this quite here just yet, but <laughs> async handler, if we look at the actual code, takes in a function. And if it's an asynchronous function, it will try to resolve it with promise.resolve. Okay, so we see that we're taking in this asynchronous function and we're passing it to this new function which calls promise.resolve on the function that we passed in. If this actually does resolve, it'll call next. But if it doesn't resolve, if it throws an error, it'll catch it and then it'll call next. In app.js, we have an error handler right here. So anytime an asynchronous function fails, it's going to pass the catch to this and say, hey, I failed, something went wrong. Okay, so we have this kind of like global, global error handler for our asynchronous functions. Now, let me get this very clear. This does not replace all catch blocks. It's not like we can now never have to worry about writing a catch block again. This is kind of like a just catch all. This is a last resort, something went wrong, make sure that it's handled because we don't want to get a uh, error that an async function threw an error outside of a catch block or something like that. We don't want that error and this will stop that error from ever happening. So inside this we're going to pass our rec res function because eventually we will need to make this asynchronous but for right now it's not. In our API gateways, we want to do the minimal amount of validation needed. 
So this usually means making sure that any variable that we needed is actually here and that those variables are in the correct form and such and such. Okay. The reason that we want to handle validation like this in the API gateway is that I don't want any of the services to be invoked if something is wrong with the information that was sent to us because then I may have to end up cleaning up things later on. So for example, let's say that I'm creating a course. I don't want to create a user that gets assigned a default course if something in the default course route or something in the default course handler or whatever I'm going to call that goes wrong because I've already created a user. I don't want to do step one and then find out that I can't do step two. So we always want to make sure to the best of our ability that both step one and step two are possible before we move past the API gateway. So to uh, validate things, I am using a library called validate.js. Uh, I'm a big fan of the saying, don't reinvent the wheel. I'm not going to try to, I mean, look at all this. They have so much here. This is a really good library to validate things with. So we installed validate.js right here. And that's just MPI or MPM I dash dash save validate.js. Okay. And once that is installed, we can require it right here at the top. So I will always put all of my requirements at the top. Some people I know require things as they go along. I don't do that. This is also just a quick note. This is how I comment my routes. So there's not going to be any query parameters and there's not going to be any parameter parameters. There's only body parameters. So you'll usually see me do something like at query or at params um, for this type of thing. But because we don't have these, I'm not going to include those. I then include all of the body parameters that are needed and the type that they need to be. So these need to be strings. Okay. And finally, if something were optional, I would usually put a star next to it, like, hey, this is optional. So we created some constraints here. We have this constant, we have a variable named constraints, and we have a first name. Its presence needs to be true, so it needs to exist, and it has to have a maximum length of 50. I don't think anyone has a first name that's over 50 characters long. Same thing with last name. It has to be here and it can be at min maximum 50 characters long. Username has to be true. And remember in our user model, so if we look at our model and we look at our users, we said that our username has to be between 8 and 20 characters. Same thing with the password. So in our gateway, we're checking to make sure our username is between 8 and 20 characters and to make sure our password is between 8 and 20 characters. Finally, for our email, we're checking to make sure that its presence is true and that it is an email. We are then ripping off all of these variables from the body um, itself. Because I don't want to write rec.body.firstName in here. We call a variable called const validation. And we're going to call the validate function from validate.js. Validate we pass in as its first argument an object. And each of the object properties needs to correspond to one of the object properties in constraints. 
Now, because we called all of these things in constraint or in the variable, the same thing as we did as the property values and constraints, we can use object destructuring and just say first name, last name, username, password, and email. The second thing that we um, pass to this function is the constraints themselves. If nothing goes wrong, if it passes validation, this will be returned as undefined, as in nothing happened, nothing ha went wrong. If something doesn't pass, validation will be an object. So we're checking here, we're saying if validation is true, undefined is not true, an object is true. So if validation is true, return res, return res dot status 400 dot JSON error validation. So we're going to return a response now. We're telling them something went wrong. Status 400, you did something. That's a user error. And we're giving them the error back, saying, hey, this is what happened. All right, that is about as far as we got. Uh, the next thing we will be doing is passing this over to the user service so that it can actually handle validation. In order to do that, we are going to start writing some tests. I'm a big believer in test first, sorry, test driven development. So here we go. I'll try to explain how much you really